Okay, we have to talk about that scene in chapter four. It's the only thing that folks are talking about because it's the only thing that really mattered. Team Ruby runs into this herbalist who I truly believe wants to help them. He believes that in order to work towards what you need to become, you need to understand what you are now. He tries to get them to answer questions like, what are you and what is a huntress? After some fairy tale land hocus pocus, each of them are confronted by a previous version of themselves. They're tempted by their younger selves. Yang is told she can go back to having both her arms. Blake is told she can become a cat or a human. She doesn't have to be a bridge between humans and Faunus. Weiss is told she can give up her family name and be a nobody. And Ruby is told that she doesn't have to be Ruby Rose. She can be anything or anyone. Weiss, Blake, and Yang all reaffirm who they are. All three are standing on firm ground here. They are huntresses and they know what that means for them. Ruby, on the other hand, is lost. She doesn't know who she is anymore. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, it's clear as day the entire volume is riding on Ruby's character arc. She's depressed. The volume is about her, which is fine. I got no real issue with that. The way this was set up, I feel like Ruby Rose will be given the chance to become someone else. I'm not saying Ruby will become the girl in the intro, but I think Ruby might become the girl in the intro. They're hinting that there's some kind of link between the two. If that's supposed to be Alex, the girl from the story, I'll be curious to see how they make that work. Will there be some kind of identity split? I have no idea. What am I supposed to do? You can do whatever you want. You don't even have to be Ruby Rose. I think the dialogue between the two Rubies was fine. What's important is not so much what the younger version said, but how Ruby reacts. She's in a dangerous place mentally if she was actually considering being someone else, and the cat interrupting in the end does not change that. Get away from her! If Ruby views her future as hopeless and impossible to improve, and she sees herself as worthless, then it's gonna take a lot more than a pep talk and a hug to pull herself out of this depression. I think. I hope. Please? Okay, so I could stop here, but I think it's important to take a look at the other three encounters. The writing for the other three highlight the problem with these characters. There are no compelling arcs happening here. The writers have given these characters nothing of late. Let's use Blake as an example. You could just be human. Or just a cat. If you wanted. Okay, FYI. If you're writing a scene where characters are being tempted, it's only interesting if they're being tempted to do something that makes sense for them and is relevant. Why would Miss Faunus Civil Rights want to be anything other than a Faunus? That's the opposite of her character. Blake is a proud Faunus who only covered her ears back in the day to avoid being recognized as a White Fang member. A criminal hiding in plain view, all with the help of a little black bow. To be something simpler. Be something simpler? The Faunus have been around since the second wave of humanity. Why are they presenting the Faunus as abnormal or a lab experiment? They're not some crossbreed. It's simple. Much simpler than trying to be a bridge between humans and Faunus. Trying to be the bridge between the humans and the Faunus? Is that what she's trying to do? Could have fooled me. She hasn't said a damn thing about the Faunus since volume six. Her father is the one starting up the new movement, so why would she be the bridge? With your father starting up a new movement, I've got more faith than ever before. Now it's up to you all to take the progress and keep running with it. What? You see, this is what happens when you have underwritten characters. They stopped building Blake's character so they have nothing to work with here. Blake's relationship status is the only thing that's relevant. You know what they should have done based on what they've given her? This is what the younger Blake should have said. The world of Remnant is a dangerous place. How many times have you and Yang almost died? If you keep fighting, eventually your luck is going to run out. You're going to lose her. Yang will die. Why not just stop fighting Salem and be with your beloved? Hell, you can even stay here and be with Blake forever. 
Then she can say, no, we have responsibilities as huntresses, blah, blah, blah. I know it's not ideal, but it makes sense for this version of Blake. She thought she lost Yang at the end of volume eight. It works. Her relationship with Yang is the only thing she has going for her. You don't have to go forward, you know. You could go back. Back to before. Oh, and Yang is in the same boat. As you can clearly see, she's got nothing going for her character. Calling back to the loss of her arm? Really? That might be compelling if this was volume four, five, or even six. We're in volume nine. Yang is well past that. Of course she rejected that notion with the quickness. Her metal arm is an asset. She's over the trauma. What are we doing here? Instead you could be a nobody. Could you imagine? Not a single bit of baggage upon your shoulders. Oh, and we can't forget about Weiss. Weiss has always been proud of her family name. Her clown of a father married into the family. Why would she want to be a nobody? Why write that? Everything she wants to do for the Schnee name, she wants to do as a huntress. The Schnee family legacy isn't yours to leave. It's mine. And I'll do it as a huntress. Whether her home is gone or not, it doesn't change anything in that regard. Why would she be tempted by this? These three encounters are worthless. They tell us nothing new about these characters. I knew how they all would respond because it's nothing they would want. I get that the point of this was to show us that Ruby is the only one really struggling here, but uh, yeah, the writing just wasn't strong. This could have been the opportunity to do something interesting with the four characters, but uh, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Ruby, this is your volume. I hope the writers pull this off. All right, that's all I got, guys. What were your thoughts on the four encounters? Did you enjoy what you heard? Let me know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you later.